Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Ron Brooks, K5TDF. And here's his question. Hello, Dave. I've been looking at your videos on how to build a 49 to 1 Anon. I want to build one with an FT240 number 43 mix. It's a type of toroid uh, and a type of mix for the toroid. A toroid is uh, like a, a trans, it's the core of a, an RF transformer. I also see that there are two turns on the primary. That's normal. I have also seen some designs with three turns on the primary. That works too. Uh, that will work at slightly lower frequencies. The two turns will work across the HF band, um, as will three turns. What determines whether two turns or three turns are used? I want to make this for legal power, so you want to make it uh, pretty sturdy, and you will note that the toroid cores can get hot, and if they get too hot, they lose their properties, and you've ruined them so you'd have to get new cores. He wants uh, 1.5 kilowatts, which will be his peak power. So we'll be using three stacked cores. Okay, does this make any difference in the design other than the overall dimensions? One more question, what inductance would I measure on a two-turn primary at 10 kilohertz and two stacked cores just to see if I'm in the ballpark? Uh, 10 kilohertz is very low for that. You're not using it at 10 kilohertz, you probably want 10 megahertz, something like that. Okay, so that's from Ron. Before we jump into answering Ron's question, I just want to pay a special thank you to Frank Berger, uh, who is a patron and has been a patron for quite some time. Thank you, Frank, for your uh, help with the channel funds and keeping this channel afloat. If you would like to become a patron too, please go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's take a look at this, uh, what we're doing on these things here. Now, before I do that, I want to make it clear that I am not an expert on building inductors. There's very little in the amateur literature about wiring your own. Some people really dig into this and can do it. So let's take a look at what's going on here. This is the core from the ARRL kit, which I haven't built yet. And this is the wire that is used on it. Note that this is a lower power one. Um, and the core has very strong magnetic fields in it. Now, it's designed, it's made of powdered iron with a little bit of an insulator. So you got all this powdered iron in there, but it can't conduct currents over a large scale. You just get the currents in the little piece of power. That keeps this from developing eddy currents. That's E, D, D, Y, eddy currents that you find in a transformer if you use a solid core. This may look solid, it's not, it's a powdered core. Okay, so what happens is if you have eddy currents, they start circulating in here. And the problem with the circulating in a conductive media is heat. Okay, so you'd get a huge amount of heat, make the uh, coil very inefficient. So that's why they make it powder, powdered iron with some sort of a binder that keeps the powdered iron parts from touching one another and creating a path for eddy currents. This is wound with uh, wire. This is the wire that they provide. Uh, every time you put the wire through the center, over here, but through the center, every time it goes through the center, that's one turn. Okay, so if you turn, wrap it around, there's two turns. So one wrap gives you a two-turn coil. Okay, now, in terms of winding a coil, 49 to 1, 49 to 1, to get the actual turns ratio, you take the square root of that, and it is um, 7 to 1. 7 is the uh, 
uh, square root of 49. Uh, 49 is, this, is the square of 7. Okay, so there's 7. Now, so if you have this thing here, and you do two turns like this up and over here and up and over here and down here, put three turns here, you have to have 7 or 21 total turns. Or you can do two, I feel better with three myself, but two, and you get 14 turns on the outside. And you spread these turns around the toroid, okay, so that you use the whole toroid for the core. Um, the difference between three and two, the uh, more the turns, the more the actual turns, the lower frequency this can handle. But for what we're talking about here, two turns may be just fine. You can do three if you want, but then you need 21 total turns on that. Now, the way these turns work, let's kind of turn this on its side if we want to, like that. And so we'll make this the winding center. And you start here down at the bottom and you go into the core, out and around, and so on, all the way up. At the three turn mark here, you tap that. Okay, so this right here is ground. Uh, that's why it's an un, un it's unbalanced to unbalanced. So one side touches ground, both sides touch ground. Okay, so this goes to the shield of the uh, coil, and which is the part that uh, connects on the outside of the SO239, the part that's in the middle of the SO239 connects in here. This is for the center. Okay, and that's the unbalanced side. Now you keep going up here, since that was three, we're gonna get a total of uh, 21 turns here. 21, so the ratio of 21 to three is seven to one, which gives a 49 to one on un now, how can you check that this is actually working? Okay, you're going to wind the whole thing, and before you install it, connect across here. Now, 50 times 49 is 2,500, 2,450. 2,450 ohms. So find a resistor that's as close to 2,450 ohms as you can find, okay, 2.45 kilo ohms, 2.45 K. Now, that's not a standard value, but get a value that is close to that, okay? Put that resistor from that point all the way down here to the ground point. You've got a resistor here, and it's 2450 ohms. Now, put this Connect this to your antenna tuner, right into this part right here. And what you should see is, if it's 49 to 1 ballon, you should see 50 ohms right there. And so you've got this terminated, okay? So you're going to see uh, 50 ohms on this. Now try that at different frequencies, and you'll get a little bit of a curve that looks sort of like this. Um, ohms are going to be a little different from frequency and so on. But make sure that's kind of around 50 ohms. If it tends to kind of weird out down here at, a, a, let's say, 80 meters, and you're only going to use it to 80 meters, you're fine, but you don't want to use it at 160 meters if it weirds out like that. If it does weird out like that and you've only wound this 2 to 1, uh, or 14 turns, then go back and wind the additional turns on there and see if you can bring this one up, okay? So that tells you a little bit about the cores that we are using, and it tells you a little bit about uh, the winding, how to count windings, and so on. So I think we've kind of covered all of the questions for uh, what to do. Now, I... The problem with ferrite cores, 
They're made by a variety of manufacturers, and for reasons that are beyond me, they're never marked. So you don't know what this is unless you have a lot of experience dealing with these magnetic cores, toroid cores, which I do not have. Okay, but if, you're, if you do this a lot, um, the different manufacturers each color code their cores. The problem is that the manufacturers do not use the same color code between them. Well, you'd think that's easy. You'd put Abraham Lincoln cores um, and then the parameters of the core over here and its heat handling capability or something like that. But no, we get nothing. We get nothing. So if you do get a project with several cores in it, don't mix that up with a project that has other multiple cores because they're n n because they are not interchangeable. Here's a QRP labs kit I'm about to build. And in here they have a package with cores. See some are, are uh, yellow. Uh, here's one that's orange. Here's black one. Here's a really weird looking one with two sets of holes in it. I mean, they come in every shape and variety. And now for this kit, the instructions will say, take the yellow one. Okay, they don't refer to it by a part number or anything. So it's just a problem with cores. If you get a core from somebody, by all means, Please mark it, just with uh, if with nothing more than uh, a, a sharpie. Mark it so that you'll know what it is. Put a little tag on it, like a key tag, and put that on there so you know what that particular thing is. Okay, Ron. So there you have it. I hope that's helpful. You've got the core. You're going to do some winding, and you've got some sort of uh, guidance that you're working off that's written, uh, go ahead and give it a try. Check the core with that little trick with the resistor that I told you about before you start applying power to it, just to make sure that the thing works properly. Make sure, um, I mean, just use the old touch test if you have to. Although if you think it's really hot, get a little saliva on your finger and touch that core. And then uh, if it is boiling hot, it'll boil the saliva, not your hand. Okay, so um, you want to make something. You may have to go with a bigger, thicker core uh, to do that. You can actually talk to the core manufacturers. There are companies like DX Engineering that sell them, but generally you have to tell them, I want this type of core from this manufacturer. And you'll give a part number and you'll get the core. Uh, using the cores is a bit of an art. Um, I have never explored it in any depth. Uh, if you know of a good book on the subject, let me know, because the cores are changing rapidly depending on, on demands. Okay, so there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, and I think you might since you viewed it this far, please go to dcastlercom slash support where you can either make a one-time tip or a recurring tip, or you can uh, do something with Patreon at patreon.com slash ke0og. Until we next meet, 73.